Video 8, How to Create a Song, Part 4 of 5. Hello. Let's keep working on those chords. The first thing I notice is that the chords sound too low, so we need to transpose them. Select all the chords tracks. and choose Transpose from the menu, and then select plus 12, because we want to move them one octave higher, that is, 12 semitones higher. Let's listen to the result. It sounds better, but it isn't yet what we're looking for. The chords are limited to a range a little bigger than an octave, but we would like to have a wider range to create the feeling of a more captivating harmonic background. We could copy all the chords into new tracks and transpose them one or two octaves higher, but this is somehow mechanic and it wouldn't guarantee that it would really sound better. Therefore, let's take the first and the third notes of the chords and transpose only them one octave higher. In this case, the range between these two notes is wider than the range between any two consecutive notes. So this selection will make the transposition sound better. We need to create two more tracks in our pattern. Now we can copy the notes This is the first one and we transpose it Next the third note and we do exactly the same Once two more tracks have been created, we can do the same operations with the second and fourth components of our original chords and transpose them two octaves higher. Let's listen to the result again. Could adjust the volume and the envelopes of our analog generators because they still sound a bit harsh due to the huge amount of notes that the oscillators have to produce. I also want to change the stereo image of the chords. At the moment the output of the two oscillators is perfectly centered but we would like to spread it a bit having one oscillator in the left channel and the other one in the right channel. We do this to get a sound that has more depth. So, I'll move the first oscillator's panning fader to the left, so that its output will be more in the left channel. And I'll do the opposite for the other oscillator, to move its output into the right channel. As you can hear, it already sounds better. We are now very close to getting a proper pad sound, but there is still something to do. Double-click on the module view to load a sampler. The idea is to use the multisynth to also drive one sampler containing a pad sample and then mix it with the two analog generators inside the amplifier. We do this in order to create a richer sound closer to the character of a real pad. 
The first thing we need to do is to load a real pad sound inside the sampler from the included library. We select Load, Instruments, Pads. In the list we are looking for files with the extension .xi, which correspond to audio samples, and we will choose pad2.xi. We then need to connect the sampler to the multisynth and to the amplifier in this manner. Select the multisynth and solo it to listen to only the chords. Select the sampler to edit the amplitude envelope of the sample to get a smoother attack. OK, this is fine. We can close it. If you then double-click on the sampler module, the Module Properties window pops up. Here we can fine-tune our sample to better match the chords produced by the two analog generators. To get more interesting sounds, a commonly used technique in electronic music is to detune a little bit apart two oscillators that are playing the same notes. That is exactly what we are doing with the two analog generators driven by the multisynth. Double click on the first analog generator and detune it, but not too much. Last thing. We select the multi-synth and see that in the parameters panel there is a fader named random pitch. If you increase the value assigned to this fader, each note that is played will be offset by a random amount between zero and the fader's value. Let's add some randomness, but not too much. Now, we really get a great pad.